I'm still trying to accept myself, accept what I have, and not dwell on it. I was about 18 when I discovered I had MRKH. When I didn't get my period, but my 12-year-old sister did, we decided to go to the gynecologist where they did an ultrasound and discovered I didn't have a uterus or a cervix and vaginal opening and that I wouldn't be able to carry my own children. It was disbelief. It was um, a feeling of why, what happened, why doesn't she have a uterus? Seeing how my mom reacted, it made me sad that I wasn't able to provide grandchildren for her one day. Even though you didn't have any control over it, you just feel just awful, helpless that you can't um, do anything to bring it back, to fix her condition. Um, it's just, it's really hard as a parent. It makes me feel less of a woman because I can't do what women are supposed to do. They're supposed to be able to carry children and create a family and have an intimate relationship and I can't provide that. The next step now is to have reconstructive surgery to create a vaginal opening so that I'll be able to have an intimate relationship with my future husband or boyfriend. They consider it a cosmetic surgery or a gender reassignment, which it's not. It's very hurtful. The fact that I have to pay 15000 for the surgery right out of college when I already owe a bunch of student loans is very hard on our family and hard on me. Because insurance companies will cover things like vasectomies for men or they will cover a portion of them to go on their Viagra pills yet they won't cover something like this that is so necessary to um, a relationship. It's heartbreaking and frustrating. This size is a normal female anatomy. We have fallopian tubes, ovaries, and the uterine, uterus and cervix. Kaylee's, Kaylee does not have any of this. No, no uterus and no cervix. Nobody knows exactly why some people have that and others don't. So insurance does not consider this as, as something that would save her life, basically. When Robbie and I first started dating, really all I could think about most of the time was when I was going to tell him, how he would react, and if he would still want to be with me, or how I was going to tell him. When she told me, I already have grown to love this person, so it's not going to make me love you any less, and I'll be there every step of the way for you. So it didn't really change my feelings about her in any way. The impact this condition has on my sex life is that it's non-existent because I don't have a vaginal opening. Um, again, Robbie's very supportive of that and doesn't focus on that part of our relationship as much because I'm not able to partake in that. In the future, when I am planning to start a family, I have my sister Amanda and a couple of my friends that have offered to be surrogates for me. I want to support her in any way possible and if that's um, something that she decides that she wants, I'm more than happy to do it for her. In order to help fund her surgery, I've been wanting to 
donate a portion of my paycheck uh, every time. Knowing that he accepts me for who I am and doesn't see me as less of a person or less of a woman makes me feel loved. I'm amazed that she hasn't let this define her. Uh, she's one of the nicest people that I know, uh, one of the most caring people that I've ever met. She inspires me every day to be more like that. In the future, I hope to have my own family and have a child of my own DNA. But if that doesn't work, because sometimes surrogacy doesn't always work, then I hope to adopt and not have MRKH define me.